Hello and welcome back to Bombchu Gaming News. My name is Chris, and I'll be covering some of the news from this week that we found interesting. World of Warcraft's upcoming Shadowlands expansion has been delayed, less than a month ahead of its planned release date. On Thursday, Blizzard released a post announcing the delay, and their reasonings for doing so, as well as revealing some details on their new plan for the expansion's launch. Blizzard stated, quote, This was an incredibly difficult decision for the team, as we're as eager to get the expansion into your hands as you are to play it. But ultimately, we feel it's the right decision for the game, and for our players. End quote. Blizzard went on to clarify that while the story, new zones, and overall leveling experience of Shadowlands is where they want it to be, other aspects still need more work, especially the planned new endgame content. Players in the WoW community have been critical of a lot of the new features and changes that have been revealed for Shadowlands so far, and it seems like Blizzard is finally starting to listen, at least somewhat. Prominent WoW streamers like Asmongold, Bellular, and Esfond have been very detailed in what their perceived problems with Shadowlands are, since they've had access to the beta for a while now. While I'm sure there's going to be people upset with this announcement, as it does come less than a month away from the game's original release date of October 27th, and also does not offer a solid replacement date, I think this is a good thing for Shadowlands overall. The content changes and additions coming with Shadowlands were a promising start, but there was clearly a lot of more work that needed to be done. Over the last few months, Blizzard has made some progress working with the feedback from the beta, but it's good to see them taking more time to continue polishing the game, instead of pushing it out the door and fixing it with patches later. Maybe some of the bad press from recent blunders like Warcraft 3 Reforged is finally starting to get the message through to Blizzard that Shigeru Miyamoto told us all years ago, a delayed game is eventually good, but a rushed game is bad forever. The next fighter coming to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate has been revealed, and believe it or not, it's actually Steve from Minecraft. In a short livestream Thursday morning, the next DLC addition to the game was shown in action, along with a brief postscript from Masahiro Sakurai himself. Steve, as well as Alex, Zombie, and the Enderman, feature all of the abilities you might expect to find in a Minecraft character, including block building, crafting, redstone, and TNT. Sakurai stated that this character took a lot of work for them to add into the game, including reworking all of the previous stages to make them support block building. He also not so subtly hinted that he wasn't all that excited to bring Minecraft into the game, and that this was a request that came from higher up at Nintendo. However, he also made clear that this doesn't change their approach to adding a character to the game, and that they've been hard at work making sure that Steve is still fun to play and adds something new and unique to Super Smash Bros., regardless of Sakurai's personal interest in the character. Steve has been something many fans, including myself, have been calling out as a potential addition to the game, especially once Minecraft launched on the Nintendo Switch. Once I got over the initial shock of Steve actually being the next character, I was kind of disinterested. However, it looks like there's a lot of unique mechanics to this character, and he could end up being a lot of fun. We'll find out more details on how Steve will work on October 3rd, during Minecraft Live 2020. EA has pulled a controversial advertisement for FIFA 21 from a children's toy magazine after facing massive criticism online. The original ad was printed in a UK children's toy catalog. The most prominent and troubling part of the ad was centered around FIFA's Ultimate Team Packs, which are FIFA's loot boxes that are purchased with real money. The ad, in the children's toy magazine I must repeat, instructs them to start playing Ultimate Team, purchase loot boxes using their real money transaction currency of points, all in pursuit of building their dream squad. While the idea of continuing to push loot boxes in general is a concept that most people are already sick of, the added twist of them putting this ad in a magazine that is explicitly targeted directly at children just helps prove the point that most of us already know. EA only cares about making as much money as they possibly can. After a few days of backlash, EA finally announced that they would be pulling the ad from the children's magazine. In a statement to Eurogamer, EA stated that copies of the magazine containing the ad would not be distributed, and that the ad would not appear in future copies of the magazine. EA also stated that they are currently reviewing all of their planned marketing to ensure this kind of advertisement for FIFA would not end up targeting children in the future. While all of this is a nice gesture when taken at face value, EA should have never allowed this to happen in the first place. If EA actually cared about how their games are marketed to children, they would have had some kind of system in place to make sure these kinds of ads never ended up in a kid's toy magazine. All that this proves is that EA is more than willing to continue towing the line when it comes to loot boxes and microtransactions. Every time they face backlash, EA puts out an empty apology and takes another step back. As soon as the backlash starts to fade away, they slowly start inching forward again, trying to maximize their profit potential from each and every consumer they can possibly reach. As long as their games continue to make them money, and unless some kind of legislation actually forces their hand, EA will continue this never-ending cycle for as long as they possibly can. 
And those are the headlines that caught our eye for this week. Make sure you let us know your thoughts on the news in the comments below, and we'll see you again next week. A huge shout out to Michael Slater, Blake Harms, and all of our other glorious patrons over on Patreon. Your support is what makes shows like this one possible. Thanks for watching.